Hello and welcome to the Kimana Spark Highlight Show. In this week's edition, we'll recap the race cards from Saturday, March 23, as well as Sunday, March 24. 19 races were on offer over the two-day weekend race carnival, including the 32nd running of the Hotline Stakes on Saturday. While on Sunday, we had the 29th running of the Sir Howard Stakes. Let's begin with race 2 from Saturday. This was a maiden special weight event for native bred and importees, three years old and up, covering a distance of 1,200 meters or six furlongs. An eight horse field with seven importees dominating the lineup. Trainer Stephen Todd had two entries breaking from gates four and five, respectively. They're often racing, that's a beautiful line as a Chocomo is the first one to show. Chocomo in front of Cleopatra Queen, racing in second. Right against the rail, that is Train of Thought. Beside Train of Thought, Pope Lady, as they pass the five. Then comes Richard Sturags. Behind Richard Sturags, that's Pretty Caroline and the trailing pair of D-Bay Machine, now overtaking the one, and that's Chesney at the back of the field. They've gone past the four and head toward the three, and it is Chocomo and uh, Cleopatra Queen. These two are fighting for it. They're a length and a half in front of Pope's Lady Hustle Up the Knox for more. Right there in fourth, that strain of thought. Behind train of thought, Richard Sturags comes next. Then uh, tailing off a bit, that is a uh, Pretty Caroline behind Pretty Caroline, D-Bay Machine, and Chesney has never been in it. They're at the top of the lane, and Chocomo now kicks about two lengths in front of right there on the inside and trying to fight back. That is Cleopatra Queen. It's Chocomo rolling, going rolling and rolling nicely. It's Chocomo, but Cleopatra Queen is not yet finished. Here comes Richie Sturags out in the middle, but Chocomo driven for all he's worth. It's Chocomo in front at the offer for a long pole, and Chocomo looks to have this one all won. Chocomo, Richie Sturags looks to be running best for second. Second, but Chocomo goes on to win by about two lengths. Got tight for second. Richard Sturag and Cleopatra Queen. Then comes Train of Thought. The top selection, Chocomo, who makes a winning debut, went up at four to five. Robert Haldin riding there for Jason Acosta and Milad Azan CD. Chocomo justifies the favoritism. Runner up, big price, Cleopatra Queen. 27 to 1, completing an exacto, which returned 1,684. So the exacto pay up there with the favorite on top. The Quinnell Plus is a must. 4,226 with a favorite on top. So the Quinella Plus indeed is worth your wager. Early double, look at that payout, 48,368. With of course that 69 to one winner in race one, Freedom for Eds. The four to five favorite Chocomoco gets the better of the foreigners in Saturday's second event. Jockey Robert Halladine putting on a good ride for the final furlong to finish two and three quarters of a length in front of the nearest rival. Race 7 from the Saturday card was an optional claiming event for three years old and up. A 10-horse veal declared to start with trainer Ryan Darby's Dodge This Link from the nine box, reflecting a lot of stable confidence in the betting. They're off and racing. XY Soul misses it along with Fault Line as they Make their way towards the six furlong on the back stretch and going through that Zabra Tone. Zabra Tone high diplomacy hounding in right this in second. They pass the six, then comes a Dodge this link rushing up, also there on the outside of Dodge this link. That is delay the game. Three lengths away before we come to another bullet, right on the inside and recovering that fault line. Then comes a XY Soul behind XY Soul, that's Bin Laden and left out of it at the back of the field as they come toward the four. That is Mind That Cat. They head toward the three, and it is Dodges Link now assumes the lead from Zabra Tone racing in second. Back there in a third, that's I Diplomacy. Rushing up, hustled up an arc for more. That is Delay the Game. Also coming on, that's another bullet. Fault Line is still recovering, and also coming on, that too, that is XY Soul. Bin Laden is left out of it and and hopelessly out of it. That's mine, that cat there at the top of the lane. And Dodge this link tells this field to ta coming to the furlong and a half pole with a good looking lead. About six lengths in front, and it looks like another. Armchair right for the sneaky fox coming to the furlong pole. It's Dodge this link beginning to pull away from these. And Dodge this link eased in the end. And surely double digits once again. Sneaky fox on a double on an afternoon stroll as well. Dodge Link beats High Diplomacy. Then comes a uh, fault line. 
and the zebra tone. That's as easy as a dub will ever get. KP Charles in race number six by 13 and three quarter lengths. And Dodges Link in race number seven by 18 and a half lengths. So you do the maths and combine the margin of victories there. And wow, Dodges Link really dismissed the opposition in no uncertain manner. The Sneaky Fox double, $234. And so far today, it's 3-1. A triple for Radish Robot and a winner for Tevin Foster so far on the day. And they may not be finished as yet. We have more to come in the remaining three races on the card. Four consecutive wins for the seven-year-old Chestnut Gelding. Dodge this link. A good ride by jockey Radish Roman who sits in second position in the Jockeys Championship race. Race 8 on the Saturday card was a restricted allowance going a mile or 8 furlongs. A 10 horse feel reduced to 9 with a scratch of Taiga Amidat, Panamanian jockey Josu Osorio aboard the 5 horse was looking for a win on his debut ride at Kimanas Park. Started holding them. Not quite satisfied. They're off and racing. Empress Lynx left at the back of the field along with Lion Charmer as they head toward the uh, seven furlong point and uh, Baby Love shows the way just narrowly in front on the outside that's Captain Philip as they head toward the uh, six furlong point on the back stretch. Sparkles now. So it's Baby Love in front of Xylophonic Steel. Sparkles right there in the third. Captain Phillips watches them on the outside. Right there too, that's always right. C coming up against the rail, that's Empress Lynx. Behind Empress Lynx, that's Waterman John. Then comes uh, the slow starting Lion Charmer and a sweet victory left at the back of the field. They head toward the four furlong point and Sparkles bouncing easy on that lead. About the length and a half in front of Baby Love. Always right, Hawks for more as they pass the four. Empress Lynx creeping up right against the rail. Captain Phillips is right there too. Also coming down into it, that's Waterman John. And also coming on, that's Lion Charmer. Three lengths away before we come to recovering from that bad break. That's Sweet Victory and left at the back of the field. That's Xylophonic Steel. They're coming into the lane shortly and it sparkles still in front. Empress Link creeping up against the rail. Sparkles Empress Link out wide and coming on. That is a Waterman John also coming on too. That is always right but it is right against the rail. Empress Link's coming forward nicely. Captain Phillips begins to fly and Captain Phillips is now at the front. Empress Link still fighting on on the inside. Captain Philip and Empress Link coming also. That sweet victory. It's Captain Philip, Empress Link, Captain Philip, Empress Link. They're bobbing heads to the line. Captain Philip, Empress Link's gone by together. Then comes sweet victory. Lion Charmer and Sparkle. How about Captain Philip at 29 to 1? Upsetting the card after two short priced bankers won. So. You had KP Charles, then you had Dodge Stink, but here comes Captain Phillips stepping up in class for the first time. One maidens easily by five and a half lengths, but stepping up to the of two, seasoned numbers of two at that, and gets the win. Jerome Innes, more popular than Cranberry, rode there for Trader Gary Griffiths, and owner Philip Azar upset. Special was Captain Philip. Wow, didn't see that one coming at all. Captain Philip, a 29 to one outsider, and the second longest shot on the board upsets the apple carts in Saturday's eighth event, giving trainer Gary Griffiths and owner Philip Azar their first win on the card. Race 9 was one of the two trophy races on the Saturday card. The St. Cecilia Cup, an open allowance event for three years old and up, covering six and a half furlongs. This was named after a Horse of the Year winner back in 2010 and 2011, who had an impressive 24 wins from 37 career starts. Starter ready. They're off for the St. Cecilia Cup. First start, Desert of Malibu gets away quickly. A gift from Bendo has that early lead. 
Madeline Sunshine in between horses, and there goes Desert of Malibu. And Desert of Malibu now picks it up from Madeline Sunshine a half a length down. A gift from Ben is a length and three parts back as they flash past the five. Track my bootylicious, probably five lengths off that lead. Emperor of the Cats races up next. The press conference on the outside, further and beyond in the gold silks races ahead of Divine Force, and the reins will have to run late. They leave the half mile, they run into that turn and head to the 7-16th and Desert of Malibu is in charge under Radish Roman. He's looking for his fourth win on the card. There goes on the outside a bootylicious. Madeline Sunshine is in a handy spot if good enough. A gift from Ben finds a run against the rail. Further and beyond, racing back in behind them. Then Emperor of the Cats press conference, Rainsville and Divine Force with a mountain to climb but Desert of Malibu not messing about will arrive at the 3 16th pole with a good looking lead on the right now becomes a busy man changing his hold and Desert of Malibu responds by opening the lead inside now the final furlong it's Desert of Malibu here is further and beyond now asked to close a four or five length gap but Desert of Malibu is swift on the legs and Desert of Malibu will take the Sensi Sealer Cup by maybe three over further and beyond then a gift from Ben Bootylicious and Rainsbill. How about that win by Desert of Malibu? No rain at the gate, no funny action at the starting gate, came out in good order, went right through and made most of the running. Stopping the clock in 1.19.4 for six and a half furlongs. That speed to 23.147 flat, 1.12.2 and won by three lengths. So Desert of Malibu registers her sixth win locally. British Roman on his four-timer for the day. And uh, so far today, he has four. Tevin Foster has one. Combined, five. I told you they were going to have a big day. And the Radish Roman, though, clearly on paper, had the better rides. And he really made most use of them. Desert of Malibu sets the record straight with an impressive comeback win after being beaten last time out. Jockey Radish Roman carefully guided the one-to-nine bet Chestnut Mare to three lengths win margin over the faster finishing further and beyond who had to settle for second place. Saturday's final event was the day's feature and second trophy race. The Hotline Stakes, a restricted allowance event for native bred three-year-old fillies, non-winners of two. A field of ten reduced to nine with a scratch of Fast and Furious links from the sixth draw. Now he is. They're off. Our almost perfect start. Banadura gets a good one. Grabs that lead. Crypto Girl going in pursuit. These two charge down the back stretch with Crypto Girl and Banadura glued together on the run toward the five. Narissa's Angel races up next. Miss Cherry almost right alongside. A break back to Oso oh Smart. Six lengths off that lead. Blue Sensation races on the outside of horses come home to me in between runners. Lady Lauren running the route on the rail and Lucy in the sky at the back of the field with a lot to find as the leaders come racing away toward the final three. Crypto Girl out in front. Banadura in hot pursuit. Three parts of a length down. A gap of five or six lengths opens up to Nerissa's Angel. Miss Cherry in between horses. Oh, so smart. And Blue Sensation asked to make ground as they come thundering into the top of the lane. They leave the quarter pole behind. Crypto Girl battling and holding that lead. Banadura continues to attack on the outside there, eye to eye. As they drive to the furlong pole, Banadura in the red now points the nose in front. Crypto Girl continues the battle on the rail. It's Banadura driven to the max. Crypto Girl trying to close the gap once again, but Banadura begins to slip away from Crypto Girl. It's Banadura coming away. A double. For the connections, Vileda Zan, CD, Jason DaCosta and Robert Halladine. Crypto Girl is second. Come home to me. Looks to be third. Miss Cherry is fourth. Close for fifth between Blue Sensation and Oh So Smart. Banadura from the Jason DaCosta band takes Saturday's 10th and final with a good ride from jockey Robert Halladine. They completed the 1,200 meters course in 1 minute 15 and 3 fifths of a second. Win margins 3 lengths flat. It's now time for a quick break on the Kimana Park Highlight Show. On the other side, we'll recap select races on the CAD from Sunday, March 24. Welcome back to the Kimana's Highlight Show. We pick up our recap from race one on the Sunday. 
Sunday's first was a restricted allowance event covering a distance of 7 furlongs or 1400 meters. A field of 11 reduced to 9, with Malmik from the 5 draw and Golden Blood from Gate 11, both deemed unfit to run. Field of 9 for the first, the first of 9. And they're off for the first. Never on a Sunday is left in the gates as the field make their way down the back stretch. Diamond Rock on the outside shows with that lead. Cottawood Cathy now accelerating to join as they slip past the six. Empress Nakilia races down against the rail as they make their way down the far side, dancing with a cat right alongside. Heroin now moving closer, just five off that lead as they leave the five. Who done it is a further three lengths back and racing in the middle. Ahmed Ali races up next and the surety trails the field. They're about to arrive at the half mile in the first. They're dashing into that turn for home, and it's a diamond rock on the outside narrowly. Cottawood Cathy now left a length and a half back and toiling to stay with the leader. Heroin is some three lengths back and racing in third, dancing with a cat making progress. Watch who done it now, quickening up on the outside as they've left the three. And Preston Aquila races in behind them, then the pair of Amadali, and just trailing the field, that's a surety, as they'll come thundering into the top of the lane in the first event. Diamond rock in charge and pouring it on, pulling right away from this field. Who done it best of the chasing in second. Heroin in the green cap racing back in third, but it's Diamond Rock continuing to hold the advantage on the run, passing the furlong pole. Who done it now beginning to nibble at that lead? Heroin continues to try hard down against the fence, but it is Diamond Rock with a four or five length lead inside the final 16th. Diamond Rock and Ramon Napier looks to have slipped away from them. They won't stop Diamond Rock winning the first by maybe six. Who done it? He's down his second. Heroin third. Dancing with a cat is fourth. Ahmed Ali is fifth. So Diamond Rock uh, gets the victory, was the early favorite to the betting, 6-5 to five at preview time, drifted out to 5-2. to two. Uh, So the backers of uh, the winner, Diamond Rock, got a little bit of a bonus there, having drifted out to 5-2. to two. Ramon Appear riding for Turner Court Williams, more popular known as Stickman. Diamond Rock firmly on top in race number one. Who done it? Ran on to complete the exacta 2,471 for the exacta. The Quinella Plus is a must, 3,640. And... Uh, we had a decent pair to the high five, third 1,365. Ramon Napier takes Sunday's first event aboard of the 2 to 1 bet, Diamond Rock, who is owned and conditioned by trainer Courtney Williams. Second place went to Who Done It, Heroin in third, and fourth was Dancing with a Cat. Race 5 from the Saturday card was another restricted allowance event, this time going a mile or eight furlongs. A 10-horse field reduced to 9 with a scratch of Easy Peasy from the Philip Lee camp while trainer Anthony Babanunis had three entries in the lineup. Now they're off. First start, Katie Strong took off fast on the far side and now grabs that early lead. Paul from above is racing close up to it. There goes Anonymous, and Anonymous now sprints through to get a narrow lead over KD Strong, Antarctica. Mr. Senator races in behind them as they make their way toward the six on the back stretch. KD Strong up in front with that lead. Anonymous racing close on the rail, Antarctica forming the line of three, uncaptured Empress snapping at their heels, Mr. Senator close enough if good enough, these separated by no more than three and a half lengths. Power from above, under a bit of an urge, leaves the five with that lead and now begins to make gains. Three lengths in behind him, that's Cookie Day and Knight. Brown Skin Girl is a further four lengths back and a whisket going nowhere at the back. They've left the half mile. They go sprinting into that turn. Uncaptured Empress in a battle with KD Strong. A half a length separates them. Antarctica asked to quicken up. Anonymous beginning to fade. Mr. Senator and Power from above wound up for their runs. There goes Cookie Day and Knight in the yellow silks, overtaking Anonymous, who is shuffled right back through the pack. Brown Skin Girl now being overtaken by Whiskid. Coming into the top of the lane. Just over two furlongs remaining, and it's on Captured Empress who has taken charge up front. On Captured Empress, out in front under Omar Walker. He's looking for his second win on the card. Can she give it to him on Captured Empress now under a drive? Here is Power from Above now asked to slice into that lead on Captured Empress up in front. Power from Above now bearing down on the outside on Captured Empress gives way. Power from Above under a powerful ride now holds the advantage, and it's Power from Above beginning to come away from them. Matthew Bennett and Paul from above, win by maybe three. On Captured Empress, ahead of Antarctica and KD Strong in the photo, Mr. Senator behind them in fifth. Paul from above uh, gets a convincing victory. Last time out at 6-5, 14th and last by some 36 lengths. Puts that 
four run behind her and proves that that victory on the 8th of October over a mile in 139.3 was good enough for this group of runners today. Matthew Bennett riding in there for Trader Anthony Nunes, convincing victory by the favorite. And the top choice, power from above, M uncaptured Empress. Ran a brave race and completed an exact which returned $999. Live ticket count on the Vegas is coming through the cash out leg 39. And two tickets are still alive on the catch sign. Twilight 6 now 314 tickets are up and running. The 2 to 1 favorite power from above redeems herself after an unfortunate mishap last time. This time around, holding firm to the track and finishing three and three quarters of a length in front. Beating uncaptured Empress, Antarctica, Katie Strong, and the fifth place finisher, Mr. Senator. The eighth race on the card was the day's feature event, the 29th running of the Sir Howard Stakes. This was a restricted allowance event for native bred coals and geldings, three years old, none winners of two. A small field of six was declared to start with O'Shea Nugent getting a chance right aboard the 3-1 to one bet world surprise. This is the 30th running of the Sir Howard Stakes, and they're off. Fair start. World surprise took off quickly with Jay Spieth. Hidden from view at the moment, Teflon Don also wanting that lead, and Teflon Don emerges with a very narrow advantage as they leave the five. Jay Spieth and world surprise in behind. Toward the outside, King's Crown, Allegiance tucked in against the rail, and Play Fair, possibly six lengths off the lead, trails the field as they leave the half mile and run the bend. Teflon Don attempting to escape pursuit, goes on by a length and a half. World Surprise pushed down into second, Jay Spieth right there in third, cutting the corner on the rail as they leave the third pole. King's Crown needs to find four or more, Play Fair now wound up on the outside, and Allegiance also needs to find possibly five as they come thundering into the top of the lane in the 30th running of the Sir Howard Stakes, and up front, Jay Spieth has now come through to snatch that lead. World surprise, a danger on the outside. Teflon Don has faded back toward the center of horses and Allegiance starts to run on the rail, but it is Jay Spieth inside the final furlong. Here is Allegiance now wound up with a kick down against the fence. It is Jay Spieth driven to the max. Allegiance now bubbling to the boil on the rail and Allegiance is traveling strong and Allegiance will win the 30th running of the Sir Howard Stakes. Jay Spieth is second. World surprise is third close between Play Fair and Teflon. London. The 30th running of the Sir Howard Stakes goes to 9 to 1 chance. Allegiance with champion jockey Ray Lewis in the saddle for trainer Anthony Baba Nunes and owner Yardy Stables. So it turned out that the only horse in the event that had multiple races and had lost ended up winning the race. We had five horses who were all winners on debut. None of them had experience in losing. And uh, they all lost for the first time today. So kudos to Allegiance and the connections of Allegiance getting this one in the winner's enclosure. And that's back-to-back -back. Sir Howard Stakes wins for Anthony Nunes. He had El Fortunado in victory in last year's renewal of the Sir Howard Stakes. So back-to-back -back Sir Howard Stakes wins for Anthony Nunes. A mild upset in the day's feature event with jockey Ryan Lewis aboard the 9-1 bet Allegiance. A three-year-old chestnut colt, trained and conditioned by Anthony Nunes and owned by the Yardi Stables. The ninth and final on the Sunday card was a restricted overnight allowance event for three years old and up. An 11-horse field set to face the starter trainer, Philip Fiani, OD. He had a double entry with Inspire Force and Gilbert from gates 6 and 9 respectively. They're off and racing. Volatility gets a flyer in the middle. Closest to us, that la rambling rose running quickly. Champion Bubbler and Milos on the far side along with Big Big Daddy. So spread right across the course, but it could be volatility and rambling rose on that lead. Just behind them, though, that's the Good Witch. Right in the middle, Champion Bubbler traveling nicely. Also on the far side, that's Milos as they make their way out of the chute and come towards the uh, two furlong point. Rambling Rose and Volatility. This is where the race lie, right in the middle. That is Champion Bubble over on the far side. Milos is really traveling well, beginning to come into it. Also that Sunset Silhouette, but it is Volatility. Milos on the far side. Here comes Champion Bubbler between 
horse season really coming with purpose. Also there, that's the good witch, but it's still volatility hanging on from champion bubbler, volatility, champion bubbler, champion bubbler, volatility. It could be volatility over champion bubbler. Then comes uh, running on for third. That sunset silhouette got tight for fourth between uh, the good witch and uh, Milos. A fitting curtain closer on the Sunday card where two jockeys had to do battle down to the wire. And when the dust cleared, it was jockey Matthew Bennett aboard the 9 to 5 favorite, Volatility, who got the better of Jerome Innes aboard Champion Bubbler by a marginal neck. This has been another edition of the Kimana Spark Highlight Show. I'll see you next time.